Howdy, howdy. So this is my second time through this video. The first time the microphone was disabled. So all my mess ups I get to redo anyway. So yay. So this video is all about turning this very flat flag into this very wavy flag. And we're going to use a couple simple tools in Illustrator to make that happen. And it's actually surprisingly easier um, than you would think. The one caveat is that it's even though it is using math to calculate a lot of these things, it is not precise. And so there can be some freaky things that go wrong. Um, and if that happens, you just get to start over and and uh, try again. OK, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the line that this flag is going to be mapped to. Uh, so I'm going to, instead of using the pen tool, like with the pen tool, I can try and like recreate these curves here but they never they never like look right. See how that's like just a real hard edge there. Um, so I'm going to use this guy right here, which is called the curvature tool. And what this does is it it creates the curve based on the distance between points. And so all I'm doing, I'm not clicking and dragging. I'm just clicking, letting go and then moving my mouse and then dropping a point. Um, and really, you don't see the final result until you finish. And that's pretty close. OK, now as I'm drawing this thing, I can continue on. If I double click, it's not going to cancel out. What I need to do, though, is I want to adjust this point here and this point here. So again, it is calculating the in and the out on these guys based on the distance between these points. So it's trying to give you the best possible curve that you can. OK, cool. Again, it keeps wanting to like make more curves. So you can come over, and to fix that, you can click on the uh, Selection tool. Uh, also, if you hover over the Selection tool, you notice there's a big capital V there. If I hit V on the keyboard, that also selects the Selection tool. Now we have an open path. Um, paths in Illustrator like to be closed, but we don't have to. OK. So want to make sure that there's no fill on this and there's no fill, but there's also no stroke. Well, let's give it a stroke. We're going to give it uh, a stroke of two points black. And then I'm going to just grab this flag and I'm going to move this, this guy off the stage here. Put this guy right in the middle. OK, so far so good. Uh, I'm going to now use um, the symbol library. Let's get rid of this one that we made already. Oh, shoot. I did not want to do that. Why is it? OK, doesn't matter. We're going to make a new one. OK, so uh, this flag we had grouped together um, previously. So if you click on this and it like grabs one of the red stripes, what you want to do is drag select all of this and uh, go to object and then group like that. Maybe that's why it's freaking out here. Nope. Okay. I'll bet you have your way. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to open up my symbol panel here. Uh, or you can go to window, window and symbols. And I want to drag this into the panel. And I'm going to create a new symbol instance. Let's call this one flag2. Uh, this is not going to be a movie clip. It's going to be a graphic. Uh, symbols were a holdover from Adobe Flash. Um, they wanted Illustrator to be able to make assets for the F Adobe Flash program, which was a, and primarily an animation program, but then people started using it to make really cool websites that were very, very insecure and terrible. <laughs> and if you didn't have a fast enough computer or virus protection, you would be hosed if you would try to visit a Flash website. So. Uh, they got rid of Flash. Uh, Apple pretty much killed that, actually. Um, anyway, but the symbol holdover is is uh, still here in the, in Illustrator, uh, and so we're creating a a graphic symbol, not a movie clip. Go ahead and leave this as dynamic. And oh, that's why I wouldn't let it delete because it's tied to that. Okay, so I'm going to click OK. Cool. Now I'm going to select my path. And I'm going to 3D extrude 
this guy, extrude and bevel. This is not an exact science. Uh, you kind of need to play with it until it looks like what you think it should be. Um, so I start by just kind of taking this cube and grabbing it so that it's just kind of tilting down a little bit. And then I set my depth like somewhere around 700. Okay, well, that's probably going to be too thin. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to create something that's going to look like that flag. Now, if this extrude depth is too narrow, obviously the American flag is going to look f way funky stretched out like this. But if we go too high, it's going to look way funky pulled up. So we want to find kind of a happy medium that works for your pixel dimensions of your artboard. Um, and also this line length is going to... Uh, make a difference as well. Um, so I think the flag will probably look pretty good in that shape there. And the last time I did it, it was 700 and it looked, it looked perfect. I don't remember what this one was. That was the first time. Through. Actually, this was the second time. The first one through was an absolute disaster. Okay, so we want to set the cap to turn off the cap and we want to turn off plastic shading. So we're going to say no shading. We don't want any shading. And next up is we're going to map that symbol onto this shape. So click Map Art. Now remember, this is a 3D shape. So it has four sides to it. There's the front of the flag. There's the back of the flag. But then there's also the edges, the left and the right edges. There's also a top and a bottom, but for some reason it doesn't, doesn't care about that. I don't know why. But you can see there's that edge right there. This one turns red. That's that edge right there. And then this number one, this doesn't shoot. Let's see, where do we go? Where did number one go? Uh, that is actually the back side of the flag. And number four is the front side of the flag. And what I had done the first or last time, you know, time before last time, is I had got it on side one instead of side four. So it was on the back of the flag. You could still see it though. Um, but the flag was, was reversed. It was blowing the other direction. So cool. OK, so I'm going to turn on invisible geometry. So this thing is going to be transparent. Uh, I'm going to choose my symbol flag 2 to map onto the surface. And I'm going to set choose scale to fit. Cool. There it is. Nice. OK, I'm going to choose OK. And what if we play with this a little bit? Can we still do that? Oh, we sure can. I'm going to make this a little bit taller. Is that working? OK, so I have to go back and scale again. I think that's looking actually a little better. And you can also grab um, whoa, these guys individually. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now that looks too tall. So I'm going to bring this. Actually, that's pretty close. Go back and scale again. And then, okay. Yeah, look at that. It's awesome. Okay, I'm happy with that. Click OK. Boop. All right. So immediately what we want to do is this can, if you're happy with it, then put a ring on it, make it, make it permanent. Go to object um, and then expand appearance. And so we're turning that into paths. Um, and let's do it again. Object expand this time. That's weird. It's not showing the little, did it show on this one too? Huh. Okay, well, what happens is sometimes these don't line up perfectly. So this flag is re alternated red and white shapes. Um, and so you can see this white shape right here kind of pulls a little bit away from the red. So it doesn't show up because our background is white. Um, but if our background was a different color, it would actually kind of peek through that little split there. But I think we're in good shape. Um, yeah, I think I think we're good. Okay. Uh, but if it was really bad, like a couple of them, these were actually folded over down into, it was like the flag was falling apart. You just got to start over and, and do it again. Uh, so that's it.
that's how you make a wavy flag and now you can move this wherever you want to probably needs a flagpole let's go ahead and add one of those what that looks so good okay i'm gonna put a little cap on this boop boop wow fantastic okay cool uh one quick thing if in fact you are really happy with the shape of this but something goes haywire and you want to start over you don't have to redraw that path you can actually go to the appearance panel this guy right here every time you add an effect onto a shape oh uh, well i uh, i expanded it so we can't but if you haven't expanded it yet, you'll see then a layer here that will be the 3D bevel and extrude. You can just delete that and then you can keep your path as it was um, and then just redo the 3D bevel and extrude again. Okay, I hope that helps.